Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, before I go off to doing all of my work at the beginning of this day, I just thought I'd take the time and share a little story with you. Most people know of this story, but most people don't know of this story. And so we're going to talk about this story. Do you guys mind? I know you don't. There is a young man and he had an occasion to have individuals being very upset with him. He didn't do anything to these people, but they were just upset with him nonetheless. And so they decided they were going to kill him. For what reason? Oh, they didn't have a reason. Just kill him. And when they did this, they killed him next to two guys who deserved to die, according to their own testimony. They deserved to die. And, well, when they observed this guy, they said, Hey, you, you're supposed to be somebody. Prove that you're somebody. Save yourself and save us too. And he ignored them. Then finally, one of them said something that was very profound, and nobody paid attention to what he was saying but one person. I want you to pay attention to the story. It says, of course, this is regarding that uh, young man named Jesus Christ. And notice what it says. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to speak abusively to him, saying, you're the Christ, are you not? Save yourself and us too. In response, the other rebuked him, the other criminal, saying, do you not fear God at all? No, he didn't say, do you not fear Jesus? He said, do you not fear God at all? So this lets you know they didn't believe he was God. Now that you are receiving the same judgment, death. They're being put to death together. And we rightly so. See, testifying that they deserved it. For we are getting back what we deserve for the things we did. But this man did nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, remember me when you get into your kingdom. Pay attention to this word right here. This is very important. He told Jesus, remember me when you get into your kingdom. Now notice what Jesus' reply was, because many people have misunderstood this reply for whatever reasons. Pay attention to the reply. And he said to him, truly I tell you today, you will be with me, not in my kingdom, but in paradise. Now, please understand, paradise and kingdom, these are not the same words. Adam and Eve were basically put in a garden-like park or a paradise, but God's kingdom is different. God's kingdom is a government. That's what it means, king dominated. So remember me when you get into your kingdom, is what he said, and Jesus not saying you're going to be with me in my kingdom in heaven, because God's kingdom is a heavenly kingdom. He said, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise, not in the heavenly kingdom, but in paradise. Letting you know that there was a distinction here and all the people over the years who have mistakenly viewed that this person who was referred to as an evildoer was going to go to heaven to be with Christ in heaven, that was not the promise. The promise that he was going to be with him in paradise. Now, what paradise? Hold on. Let's show y'all. We got to go to all publications. We go back to Biblia. We go back. We're going to go to, let's go to reference this time. I haven't gone to reference in a long time. It's called the reference Bible. We can go there and we can go to Revelation. Revelation. And as we go to Revelation, we're going to go to 21 so that we can see what Jesus was talking about. Because remember, oh, I'm sorry, let's go back to 1. Sorry. Let's go back to 1 so you can see why we're going to Revelation. Hold on. A revelation by Jesus Christ, which, he, which God gave him. But I thought Jesus was God. Anyway, a revelation by Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his slaves the things that must shortly take place. And he sent forth his angel, whose angel? Gee, this is angel. And presented it in signs through him to his slave, John. Now, so Jesus is the one who made the promise. Let's see what the promise had to do with. 21st chapter, 
ladies and gentlemen, right here, verse number four. And he will wipe out every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more. Neither will mourning, nor outcry, nor pain be any more. The former things have passed away. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus promised the guy that he would be with him in paradise. This is the time that it is referred to as a paradise when there is no more death. When the individuals are resurrected. What? That's what the 21st chapter talks. I mean, the 20th chapter talks about how the sea gave up those dead in them. And death and Hades, the grave, gave up those dead in them. And they were judged according to their deeds during that judgment day of a thousand years. This is what he was promising the young guy. And if he remained faithful during that time and passed that test, then he'll never die again. That is the promise. Got to remain faithful, though. And look, this is what Jehovah says. It says, and the one seated on the throne said, look, I am making all things new. Why? Because we done destroyed everything else. <laughs> of course he's got to make it new. Man, we done destroyed everything. Then he says, look, I am making all things new. And also he says, write this down right w-r-i-t-e not r-i-g-h-t right because these words are faithful and true so that's what i wanted to share with y'all because a lot of people when they read that they didn't pay attention to that individual called an evador oh there's just so much going on on the screen right here we gotta minimize everything Ladies and gentlemen, the young man they were calling an evildoer, nobody paid attention that he said, Jesus, remember me when you get into your kingdom. And Jesus said, you will be with me in paradise. Nobody paid attention to the two designations there, one being a kingdom and the other one being a paradise. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story. That's what I wanted to bring to your attention. Hopefully the information was beneficial. Have a good day. Have a good life. Have a goodbye.